but he died months before that. So I went home, so that was the start of my dark moment. Dad, when my dad died, dad was the 13th in that year who died. Um, his oldest sister died on the 1st of January. Then March, my uncle died as well. And then that's when I told my dad, Dad, you're the only one left. And I said, oh, it's all right, you're all going there. So he was prepared for his uh, death anyway. And that's it, in May, he died. He finished just the, our family do the traditional Flores de Mayo as well for the whole town. So we were usually in charge of it. So he attended that, he finished all that. And he never went home to his hometown for more than 25 years. But that year, he opted to go. And then the day after the end of Flores de Mayo, he was not, he was not sick, he was no illness, he was diabetic. And then that's it, all of a sudden he just became weak. So they said, oh, we'll tell you, take you to the hospital. He said, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow because it's still Sunday or holiday or something like that. It, there was, like, it was an office hour, so it was supposed to be tomorrow. And that's it, before the end of the night, he already died. So it was sudden for me, because that's it, I, was, I wasn't prepared. I only knew about it on Facebook, and I didn't even check, and then I don't know, I got, so I didn't realize there's so many people calling me that my dad died, my dad died. Um, he died in our farm where there was no electricity, there was nothing. But they do have the walkie-talkie, the radio, so somebody from the farm informed someone in the town. So it wasn't a direct relative, it was a cousin in town who posted it on Facebook that my dad died. Because all of my direct family, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, they were all there celebrating the Flores de Mayo. So of course, seeing that somebody posted it, that's not even my brother, not my mom. So I thought it wasn't true until that's it. it you just couldn't call me because they don't have electricity, there, there was no signal or anything. But that was more of like accepted, that's fine. Um, oh yeah, back to it, I'm a single mother of two, so it's not something that I'm proud of, but I had two failed relationships. I have a 22-year-old and a 14-year-old. So, when my dad died, so I had to go home immediately. Because the budget was quite constrained, I, it was only me who went home, I had a Welsh partner before. That before I even came back to the country, I was already told that he was having an affair with another another person, someone, colleague of ours. So I came back, just straightforward, he said he was out. I got a two-year-old son then and a nine-year-old daughter. Life was difficult. It was difficult. I always, always say that to the youth because I'm always close to the youth. I have never, ever wished anyone to literally feel single parent for Sometimes it's bad because you see other people claiming they're single parent if they want the benefit, but if they only knew the literal meaning of single parenthood, gosh, the challenge is really, really tough. Well, I am here standing in front of you and I'm proud of it and I'm happy to be who I am now. Amen. The struggles of being a single parent. I had some cases with the custody of my child, um, my ex-partner. It was a nasty situation, so we had to go to court and all that. The fact that I just literally went home, I don't have the money to pay for the solicitors. I had, how do you do that? I've been through threats and I can't remember what was the word, but I did file for a restraining order for all of that. It's because that's the only thing I could afford. I went to a solicitor to file a case against them for the abuse. 
But then solicitors told me the amount of money that I need to prepare then. The fact that you're a single mother, obviously, wala akong pera. So you look sturdy, firm, and strong in front of the solicitor. When actually, when I left the building, I looked for a corner in one of the streets and I burst out crying. And that's when I realized, Lord, for my own freedom and peace, ganun, ganun, ilang libo. So I said, it's all right, just keep me strong. In case there's more abuse, make sure that my children are safe, like we are safe. God, I knew, was listening to me all that time, but I did realize during that time that God wasn't punishing me because that was the first thing that I thought of. I am probably punished because they get married in the church. <laughs> so, you know, going out of your path, I think, being na mali kasi yung ginawa ko. But then it took a while for me to realize, no, not, God was not breaking me down. God was telling me, I'm breaking you out from where you are because I mold something way much better than who you could be. Amen. Then comes CFC. Sister Lisa, Atikas, they were the sisters that I look up into. The fact that you felt like you had a family away, thousands of miles away from where you are. That's what the community is all about. For you to know that there's people for you, God will touch other people to be there for you. Simply because he cannot physically go down from heaven and tell you, I am here for you. So for all those times, everything that I've been through, nakayanan ko. But for now, my children are all grown up. I'm happy with it. All those years, I always pray and I challenge my, my words and prayers for that. I came to a point when I was, because I'm a single mother, and then I'm struggling to, to live, to mean to bring up my two children. I came to a point when I was given already the eviction letter, because I didn't pay my rent for how many months. And then I was, of course, you feel burdened and all that, but strong enough to say, that's it for my sisters in Christ. Can I stay in your place? Uh, or I keep my I keep this uh, sa bahay niyo na yung cabinet mo na namin na kami makikitulog kaya nito. Everyone was very helpful and all that. To the point that sometimes that uh, you just feel like you're embarrassed as well because you keep on asking for things from other people. This is the church where I go to. All throughout those times that I was struggling because you're single, you got no one to talk to. I talk to God most of the time. Most of the night, I would speak to God. Because God couldn't answer you, I don't know what was going on. Every day after a night shift, they have a nine o'clock mass here. Every day, the reading, the homily, the gospel is the exact answer to what I was asking God the night before. One very significant miracle that God gave me was I was supposed to be evicted that time, and I was already prepared, I asked already a few sisters to separate our things, and then so we would leave the house. Went to church, I was here praying, and I said, God, it's all up to you. Now I will not pray that you will drop money or give me the blessing to have loads of money. All I'm asking is, I'll change my way the way I pray now. Give me the strength to endure all this, Give me the way to find the money to all, to all that, whether it will be a longer period, but touch someone's heart to help me with what I'm going through. So the mass finished there, I went home. There was a letter already in the house. It was a check from PPI. Mm -hmm. The PPI check was way more than enough for me to pay the four, four months rent that was owed. I managed to buy things for my children and I managed to pay a few debts from the friends that I owed money to. I know we are overwhelming na all these months of praying that God will find ways. God will Amen. drop it. God was probably telling me, I am there for you all the time. And like, I have never ever forsaken you. That's why I always. Whenever I pray, you know, when we do our adoration at the beginning, I always, always we say that God has always been my provider and my protector. So after that, things were fine. Carry on with the service. 
the year after I had an issue at work, <laughs> it never stopped. That's what it meant. When you, when you serve the Lord, it will not stop. God would always tell you, like, up to when, hanggang saan ang kaya mo to proclaim that in spite of all this, I am still your God. After all that, I was involved on a case at work. We were all taken to court because I was on duty that night. It took a long time for the hearing and all that. I survived and I still got my job. So that's another blessing for me. As we go on with the community, I changed my prayer. God, I know probably all these challenges will never stop. It would always be there. That's how life is. So every day as I woke up, I changed my prayers into give me the strength to endure the day. Give me the ability to be fruitful for today. So that at the end of the day, I would know when I go to sleep, I'll be okay, ready to face the next day if I wake up again. It has always been like that, and I've always, always been grateful for that. The last time that I shared, I think the first face-to-face -face that we did after the COVID. So I think that the last time that I shared, as in Abiko, and up to now, God has always been amazing to me. I don't have any stress, no worries after everything. He will always be my provider. He, I, on, on my thinking, that's how I see it. I don't need a husband. God is there as my partner in life. I talk to Jesus. You know when you come home, you sit down, some people will talk to their husband. That's how I see it. So that's how I, I am used to it then. So when I shared it, I said, I always live up to that song na sinabing, use me for your glory. So I am not ashamed to tell people of my past, because I know all that helped other, people's who, other people would know what happened to me, that God in this used me, used me to be, for you to know that how amazing this was, how he worked through me. Here comes the anniversary. <laughs> In 2022, another thing has strike again. My ex-partner, whom I have forgiven and even made friends with, surprisingly reported me again to the police for child abuse. That's the time we were supposed to go to Krakow. We booked, the CFC booked a trip to Krakow for the Sacred Heart anniversary. Um, that time, the agreement was every other weekend, my son sees him. So we were all back, ready. And then in the middle of the night, because it was summer, we were in the garden. So all those years, every day my prayer was, Lord, thank you, there was no challenges. Lord, thank you for today, I manage it. It, it was all more positive. I know there are times I would say, Lord, I don't want to go back to that dark moment when the challenges is one after the other. I thought like I'll really break down. So probably it wasn't that I broke down. It's just that God knows that, no, you'll break through it and become stronger because I'll give you more challenges soon and you will know how to face it. So surprisingly, the police knocked in the middle of the night, interviewed me for the child abuse. And because I am Asian, sorry, my child answered to the police, yeah, my mom hit me. <laughs> Without even saying, oh, when I do something wrong, my mom hits me. No, he just break a little the police, yeah, my mom hits me. So he thought probably that's casual that everyone tells you. We spank our children and do something naughty. But the police didn't do anything. And then explain everything to the police. He said, oh, just to let you know, the police is already aware, child services, this and that. I said, we're flying tomorrow morning. And then the police said, just be prepared because you are, I'm friends with my ex-partner. I did not ask for a written permit for my child to leave the country. When we were still not friends, when we broke up, every time we go home to the Philippines, I let him sign the papers. We've been to a few places. We went to Portugal as a community, the CFC. He signed all the papers that I'm taking the child out of the country. It's just that because I thought my child was already 12, we we're friends, we talked to each other. I told him, oh, we're going on holiday in Krakow. He's aware. 
I don't know what sort of a traitor he is without even telling me that we are talking, we are friends. He just reported me to the police for child abuse. So the police told me, be prepared. You might be arrested at the airport because I cannot cancel the trip anymore, isn't it? So, ah, okay, is it? Yeah, because he might deny it that he's aware you're leaving and or just say, oh, I wasn't aware, I had no written evidence that the child is going. So, are you okay if you get arrested at the airport? Of course you cannot say, yeah, I'm fine. But you know what's the nice thing about being in the community and growing up in faith? I spoke to my children. I said I was warned by the police that I might be arrested at the airport. I said, so you we need to focus. If that's what would happen, that itself is God's will. And then if that happens, trust me, I have been through hell and out. God will never forsake me. And being arrested is just another thing. There is always a solution for that. I said, but I'll be fine, and I know you will be fine. A lot of people will look after us. We are okay. We'll face this again. Yeah, here I am, 2024. Resolved, no problem. That's why I said, no matter what, it doesn't mean just because you belong to the community, you'll be problem free. I think when we belong to the community, the more that God is there working through us to tell us that life itself outside this will be really, really tough. But to remind us that no matter what, He is there for us. He would always be our protector. He will be our provider. He would always be the answer to our questions and all our worries. And at the end of the day, actually, there's nothing that we need to worry. That's what he said, if I am there, you just probably need to look at a different way because he already answered all your worries. Okay. Up to now, even though I'm single, and I know my community would always pray for a partner for me. <laughs> they said sila daw bahala pag nagkasal. The only problem is, wala mong pamakasal. <laughs> so, ipopost pa namin yan, i advertise. So, hopefully, we must be probably if we pray as the whole community, you never know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, then that's it. That's what I mean. Um, but with me personally, no, I'm happy as I am. Happy as I am to the point that I feel like I have a very, very big extended family through Christ in the presence of all of you. That itself made me strong. That itself made me carry on. That itself makes me feel like I will carry on and I will continue to serve the Lord no matter what. Amen. Thank you. See, despite having a lot of challenges, brothers and sisters, see, Sister Nikki is so happy now, even without a better car or a partner or whatever. But she, she already got us as a family. We are one big family, one big community in Christ. So, what will be our next? I just want you to. I want to show you something. Or possibly, I will just, whoever are present at the moment, sila lang tatawagin ko muna. But I will announce them. We'll be announcing our new leaders. Okay? Remember, we have a restructuring in the whole UK. And because we are already in chapter, and uh, it happened so fast. Brother Nating, uh, he was been praying that our uh, unit will become a chapter and now it happened. Okay? So, I'm going to ask those brothers and sisters who are here to come forward. So our unit one, new unit leaders, his brother Nanding and sister Lisette. You can see them. Come forward, bro. Come forward. I will have drugs now. I will have drugs. I will have drugs now. 
Mir mir nicht gern. Okay. Okay. So where's this little set? So brother Fernando Nan Aga Nandi De La Cruz and sister De La Cruz. Our new unit leader from Unit One. Anyway, I'll explain to you why it's Unit One, and there will be Unit Two as well. Our next unit leaders is from Unit 2, Brother Mario and Sister Maggie Aquino. They're in the Philippines at the moment. Okay. Okay. And the next is our household leader from Unit 2, Brother Pano and Sister. Yes, me. And our new household leader as well from Unit 1 is Brother Gerson and Sister Army. And our next is our chapter YFC coordinator. Brother Louis and Sister Ivy. They used to be this one C YFC coordinator. And the next one is our family is a gift or fake coordinators from Martha. Brother Don and Sister Mary Grace. <laughs> We will do the proper announcement, okay? Ang mga guwapo talaga, oh. Okay. Diyan, diyan, diyan muna kayo. Huwag kayong alis dyan. Tayo lang kayo dyan. Okay. If you can see in the screen our 2024 CFC Cluster C uh, ano ba tawag dito? Structure. So, Unit 1 leaders will be Brother Nanding and Sister Nisel and Unit 2 will be Brother Mario and Sister Maggie. And in this, if you can see why Brother Arnel and Sister Bridget is on Unit 2, it's because of the numbers. In each unit, there, there should be 20 couples each unit. Okay? Kaya, dito napunta muna si na Brother Arnel sa unit ko. Okay. okay, Brother Arnel, unit 2. Okay. At dito lang yung mga pangalan nyo, ha? At eto yung mga chapter coordinators natin. Sa PFO, si Brother Chito and Sister Grace. YFC coordinator, Brother Lewin, Sister Ivy, SFC coordinator as well. Grabe, Brother. Nothing is Sister Lucelle. And we have our whole coordinator, uh, Sister McNaught, Benia, event and finance coordinators, Brother Mario and Sister Maggie again. Our tech team coordinators, Brother Chino and Brother Don Fernandez. Our building of the church, 
on the floor and ANCOP coordinator, Ro Roel Sibayan, and of course, with Sister Alona. And our family is a game coordinator from Berta will be Brother Don Sister Grace Padua. And every uh, household, for, for example, in Swansea, there will be one family is a gift coordinator, one in Cardiff as well. And this is our cluster coordinators. I'm in church with the MSG, KFC is still Brother Padre and Sister Jazz, Music Ministry is Brother Arnel, Media and Documentation, of course, Brother Jed. Okay. And our family ministry food, MSG is Sister Risa de, de Los Santos. San, may nakalimutan niya ang tango ah. Hindi ko pa natapos, kagabi ko lang ginagawa ito. So, since May Quente will be the whole chapter leader, at yun yung mga members niya. Hindi ko na kompleto. Alas dos, alas dos na rin kasi eh. So, brother natin kasi si Lizelle, meron din siyang mga inawakan ng mga SFC doon. Uh, KFC, hindi ko na natapos. Tapos na ito yung sa ano sa uh, YFC. So, tatapusin ko mami yung gabi. So, I'll be sending this structure sa CFC Wales para makita nyo. Kung may question kayo, saka, saka ko na nagsasagutin. Basta ang important say, nag say yes kayo. Yes. Okay? So, I will ask everybody, all those new leaders, to form a circle, get chairs, including those birthday celebrants, uh, wedding anniversaries, and those brothers and sisters who want healing as well. Please. Hola, ng mga bagong leaders. Dito kayo. Uh, mga birthday celebrants. Kahit hindi magse-celebrate. Dito pa rin kayo. Anniversaries. Birthdays. Wedding anniversaries.
Let us put ourselves in the presence of our dear Lord as we make the sign of love in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We start glorifying the Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. We're the King of kings. You're the Lord of your name is above all name, Lord God, and our Redeemer, our great healer, our great provider, Lord God. Praise you and glorify you, magnify you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord God, thank you very much, Lord God. We're gathering once again, us again, Lord God, in this uh, General Assembly, Lord God. Thank you for this place, Lord God, that you, you've given to us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God for sending your Holy Spirit to protect us, to guide us, to empower us, to love us, to bless each and every one of us here, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. We have our brothers and sisters here, Lord God, that we are going to pray over, Lord God. We pray for, Lord God, for our new leaders in this community, Lord God, who accepted their roles, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that there will be a lot of challenges that will be coming on their way, Lord God. But we always know, Lord God, that you're always there for them, Lord God. May you give them the strength to serve you, Lord God, to be more faithful to you, Lord God, to be more faithful in their service, Lord God. We offer to you, Lord God, our unit leaders, new unit leaders, new household leaders, new coordinators, We offer to you, Lord, our brothers and sisters who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries, Lord God. May you give them more birthdays and anniversaries to, to, to celebrate, Lord God. May you give them good health, Lord God, and be with them always. We pray as well, Lord God, for our brothers and sisters who are uh, awaiting treatments, yes. awaiting surgeries or whatever who needs healing as well, Lord God. May you give them good health, Lord God. Heal them, Lord God. Lay your merciful and healing hand hands on them, Lord God, so that they can go back to normal health, Lord God, so they can serve you more, Lord God, and serve their families and loved ones, Lord God. Suffering from depression, illnesses, having problems with the marriage, 